from 2014. This is the year that the task force was revitalized, where uh, the present and existing working groups uh, were set up. And after this period, the task force met on a yearly basis. Uh, their specific goals were, first of all, to support global strategies for cholera prevention and control. Um, and uh, the one at the bottom there is, is the one that I think uh, they needed to focus on, because clearly cholera has always been there, but it's always been in the background. And what their focus needed to be is to increase the visibility of cholera as an important global public health problem. Obviously, they needed to uh, strengthen coordination, cooperation with partners, and we can see from uh, the attendance of this workshop what successes were achieved in this regard. Um, the work groups met frequently. Uh, you had their sp uh, specific uh, reports that they've given. The task force met on an annual basis to take stock of where, uh, where they are and also to sharpen some of the tools that they've, they've had. Some of the key meetings that they had uh, was the WASH working group meeting in February 2017, where they met in, the, uh, in, in Dakar, Senegal. Um, at this particular forum, they linked cholera to uh, the SDG ag agendas. And obviously, this was a forum that was used to profile uh, cholera go uh, globally as well. The next meeting, uh, I had the pleasure of, of uh, attending this meeting in Cape Town uh, in June 2017, where there was a specific focus on advocacy as, as well, and again, sharpening our tools and making the tools better. Uh, during that same year and, and during that meeting, uh, the foundations were laid to assess the effectivity of the task force. Um, recommendations came out of this assessment, specifically also uh, focusing on advocacy. Um, if an organization um, is assessed, that I think always there's findings in terms of its communication, either internally, but also with external borders. So there was recommendations in this regard. Um, at this particular meeting in, in Cape Town was also some of the foundations for uh, the launching of the uh, global uh, end cholera campaign was, uh, was, was, lab was made. And there was a meeting uh, in this very forum in October uh, 2017 where this uh, global roadmap to end cholera by 2030 uh, was adopted. This was a, a, a well-attended meeting, more than 100 participants, and it also received great coverage. Uh, I'll show you some of the uh, links and coverage uh, that, that it received. Obviously, in this forum, a lot of partners committed to the, uh, the fight against cholera. One of the focus uh, and one of the needs for focus was also where uh, ministers of health meet to go beyond just partners and people that's technically involved with cholera to promote uh, the fight against cholera amongst our politicians. Um, going with this, there was a specific forum in 2017 uh, where there was a site uh, meeting held uh, where the roadmap was introduced to uh, our principals, the ministers of health. Um, and then during 2017, uh, there was obviously during that year a lot of work that went into a specific um, resolution that was tabled uh, in 2018 at, at the World Health Assembly. Uh, to prevent and control cholera, uh, and, and some of this uh, resolution also have reference towards the roadmap. Um, at this 2018 uh, World Health Assembly, there was also a side event to celebrate 
um, the, the resolution that was taken. In 2019, specific countries, uh, uh, clearly uh, one of the countries that played a leading role to push the roadmap for uh, the, the roadmap and the resolution forward was Zambia. They um, there was engagement with, with them, and there was also a launch of their cholera elimination plan. Uh, there's pictures on the right where you can see some of the engagements that happened in this regard. Um, some of the external meetings, we uh, part of advocacy and as we move forward, some of our challenges is to move the opportunities uh, and utilize those opportunities uh, meaningfully. Some of these opportunities it, uh, would the broader water, uh, World Water Week, uh, sanitation days, toilet days, and those specific days we need to, to focus on. Uh, some of the events that, that, that happened and that you'll see on the timeline is that during uh, 2017 and 2018, specifically with Water Week, uh, there was a focus uh, by uh, the task force on uh, putting the cholera uh, fight on the global agenda. Uh, there was a high-level uh, political forum on SDG in August uh, 2018, and as well a focus on cholera during the Africa Health Forum in March 2019. This is just some of the media focus on cholera. A lot of it focuses on uh, the launch of the roadmap that happened here, but but clearly, uh, in my mind, there's still a long way to go. Some successes, but uh, still some challenges ahead of us. This is the roadmap. Uh, a lot of the events that I've indicated to you uh, are on this roadmap. Some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the green or the blue areas highlight the major events like the launch of the roadmap. Uh, the resolution that's taken, but it, all, it also highlights uh, the annual meetings that we held uh, in this forum, and also the fo a specific focus on uh, World Water uh, Day and World Water Week and World Toilet uh, Day and so forth. I think the challenge is to move beyond where we're at, the red spot at the moment. We've heard yesterday input uh, that that we need to look broader for uh, look at broader fora. We know that uh, fighting cholera goes beyond just the health sector. We need to focus at at uh, fora where our presidents meet, for instance, the AU uh, or the UN meeting in September. These are challenges in our advocacy that we need to take forward. But, but uh, having said that, I, I think this is where my input end. And if I was uh, in the chair there, I, I, I think I made my time, my four-minute limit. So thank you very much. <laughs>